Hey there, Alan Moore Watchmen and DCUC fans. This is Wesatron. Today we're taking a look at Maddie Collector's exclusive Watchmen line, the first of which features Rorschach. Um, as you can see from the box, it's styled after the uh, Watchmen comic book art uh, with the uh, iconic clock counting down to doomsday. Um, up here it says specifically Adult Collector. And uh, down here it's got the DC Comics label. On the side of the mailer, this is just the mailer, this is the like, exterior box. Uh, we've got some uh, Rorschach symbols, so that's pretty cool. And the back is pretty much the same as the front, nothing major there. Over here, some of the graffiti, this actually says, Who Watches the Watchmen in the book. So, lots of safety policies and stuff on the bottom, but not much. So, um, yeah, this uh, comic book I think came out in 1986, 85 or 86. Um, Excellent comic book if you get the chance to read it. Um, it'll uh, it'll do a lot for you in terms of uh, where comic books should be in the writing game. Um, it's a great comic book, highly recommended. Um, oddly enough, um, Alan Moore, sort of uh, in the comic itself, uh, <laughs> wrote up his own action figures for the characters. Um, so. Uh, sort of as a joke about commercialism and things like that, so odds are he'd probably hate that this action figure exists, but um, it is kind of funny that they went ahead and made it, and uh, everybody's been asking for it for years, and now that Watchmen's kind of folded back into DC, it works. So, this is uh, similar to how the graphic novel cover looks, to an extent, I think there's been several versions over the year, my version looks a little different than this, but um, it's an older copy. Um, it says Rorschach down here at the bottom, the blood splatter on the uh, smiley face pen, um, shot of Rorschach, kind of uh, stylized, I'm not sure who did this art, but um, kind of simple, neat uh, Watchmen in the back. This is uh, another one of the um, book covers that they did. Um, the reason I'm going over the packaging so much is because it's kind of designed in a really interesting way, where it's, it looks like a book, it's got this big empty space here. What's really neat is once you open it, the figure has no plastic over him. He's actually like just sitting in this uh, uh, little section here, like uh, held in by the uh, form of the plastic, which is really, really neat. Um, because it means it's completely collector friendly. Like you could easily um, pop him back into the box as I have done. As you can see, uh, there's a little denting here, but I think that was actually there before I came in. Um, but also, it makes it for a nice display piece. If you wanted to just kind of set this out like this, if you had you know big shelves. You'd have a nice shot of your action figure, and over here, a shot of this cardboard thing. So that's pretty cool. I dig that. Um, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm not going to pull this out. Um, I'm trying to leave as much intact as I possibly can, because I am going to return this to Maddie to get a, a, sep a separate one if I can, a replacement. Um, but I do want to show how everything works here. Here's Rorschach out of packaging. I just kind of wanted to get a wide shot so you can see him on his stand, which is very nice, and uh, with his uh, grappling hook, just so you can kind of see how the whole package fits together. Now, the, the figure itself looks pretty nice on the whole. I dig it. Um, they did a very nice job uh, kind of using existing parts um, with some new parts to create a, a pretty unique figure, so I, I really appreciate um their ingenuity there. First off, let's take a quick look at the stand. Very simple, Watchmen yellow background there. Um, I'm uh, kind of curious how hard it was for them to resist the temptation just to make the uh, yellow buttons for everybody. Um, I kind of dig it a little bit more to just have the um, the yellow simple um, background with the uh, Watchmen name there. I, I kind of think that that's a little uh, a little what I didn't expect, unexpected is the word. Um, I, I think it uh, shows a little uh, kind of uh, ingenuity, a little uh, panache. that They didn't just kind of fall back on the uh, old classic design. They kind of did something at least slightly new. That's kind of neat. Um, Grappling Hook, as far as I remember, he only uses once in the actual story at the very beginning. Um, but it was, if I'm not mistaken, in the uh, original comic book art, the uh, figure that Alan Moore designed for the uh, story. Um, so uh, I guess that's part of why they decided to do it. Um, not that there's like a whole lot of other things you could really give to Rorschach to make him feel worth the price tag. But um, 
it looks very nice. They did a nice wash here on the rope. Um, it, it's very flexible. Uh, the whole thing is, I mean, it's all one solid piece. So, um, you know, be careful that you don't warp it too much trying to get out of package. But you can always boil it to try and fix that. But um, the rope looks very realistic. They did a nice wash on it. Um, nice uh, kind of metallic orange here on the uh, spear for the grappling hook. Um, the uh, little, uh, like, I guess, CO2 canister looks great. Very simple design, very elegant. Um, very, very nice. Uh, and if you forget where it was made, there you go. China. Huge letters. I don't know why all Mattel um, accessories have to have that in huge letters when no other company in the world does that. They say something about safety practices, I don't know, but nobody else does it, so I don't know what that BS is about. But Very nice looking accessory. As you saw, it fits into his hand pretty nicely. Um, his hand's pretty tight on it, so you can easily pop it in and out of there. So. Very cool accessories, I dig those. Um, they definitely help make the uh, price tag a little easier to swallow. So, uh, onto the figure. You can see it's got the Rorschach pattern on the mask. Um, if you've seen the movie or the, or you've read the book, you know that um, the uh, pattern is sort of a, a shifting pattern. It changes, is it maybe due to body heat? But like basically it uh, it's always morphing, so his face always looks a little different. So it would have been neat to see like a, a couple different variations of this. Um, I always was a little more partial to the ones that didn't look like a symmetrical face, and unfortunately they did that with this one. Like, you can clearly see there's supposed to be eyes, nose, and a mouth. Um, I would have preferred that they kind of went with something where there was like a big splotch in the middle that just didn't make sense. I always thought that was cool. Unfortunately on mine, there is some slop. You can see um, someone has touched. I know there's black on my finger, but I swear it wasn't me. <laughs> That's from work. That's, uh, yeah, it's toner. But, um... Someone has smudged this here, and you can see it's smudged there a little bit on the eye, and it's even on the back. So I, I'm guessing someone like turned the head while it was still wet, and maybe touched back here or something. That's the the best I can imagine. As you can see, it kind of mimics the shape. So that's a huge bummer. That's why I'm going to try and get this replaced if I can. Hopefully they uh, answer my email soon. But um, very nice job on the hat and face. You know, the hat seems to be the right size. Uh, very nice. Um, not a whole lot of detail in it, but it kind of fits with the DCUC aesthetic. Um, they did a whole new overlay piece for the coat. Um, this body's been reused a trillion times, but they they really decided to go all out for the coat, and I appreciate that. Um, they've got the little ascot up here, which the paint didn't go all the way to the edges like it should, um, which is a bit of a bummer, but I can deal with it. Um, the missing button here on the coat looks great. He's always got it tied up, really tight around him, very cool. Um, just very, very nice overall. Uh, and of course, the ridiculous huge stamp on the back that everybody else puts on a foot. And what do you know, he's got something there too. Uh, I don't know, whatever, Mattel. Um, it is glued here in the front, which is highly, highly unfortunate because it makes the legs almost completely immobile. I would have rather this been left open where you could get some movement out of the legs, because this is a very flexible plastic, so could have easily gotten some movement out of the legs, but whatever. Um, you see the buttons have a little paint on them, and it's hard to tell under here, but as I turn it, you hopefully will be able to see that there's a bit of a wash, like some uh, airbrushing perhaps, uh, and to make it just kind of look a little more uh, dingy, a little dirtier, which really makes sense for the character. Um, same upper arms and everything. Uh, lower arms, I think, are new. I'm not 100% positive on that. They may have been reused from the question. Um, I don't have my question figure out and available right now, but um, uh, they may be new. Um, I, I don't remember the uh, straps and buckles on any of the other figures, but I could just be way off on that. Um, the hands are very nicely sculpted. Um, they've got a real, real leather pattern to them. Uh, very, very cool. Like I love the way that the fabric bunches up here and the stitching on the sides. This is some stuff that uh, Four Horsemen does really well when they're given the opportunity. They're really good at doing details when they're allowed to do details. Um, so it's the same on both gloves. It looks really, really nice. Um, this glove looks really similar to um, uh, the sculpting on like the Ra's al Ghul glove, but I'm pretty sure it's not the same. Yeah, because he had like an open pattern there on the back of the uh, hand, so, um, got the pinstripe pants, look very nice, very similar to Joker, uh, all the lines look pretty straight, well, those two kind of converge a little bit, but not a huge deal, um, I don't, I'm not really too concerned about the lines, you know, as long as 
you know, they look decent, not too crazy, you know, it's okay. Like, they converge a little there, but, I mean, there's also folds on the cloth there, so it might do that naturally anyway. And then the shoes look great. Um, I'm not sure if these are new sculpts, but they sure look fantastic. Um, they did, did a great wash on these to kind of make them look really leathery and dirty. Um, very, very cool. You can see it much better on this on this shoe, actually. Very dark. Come on, focus. There we go. Very uh, dark, and the shoestrings were really well done. The laces, uh, uh, not the laces, the uh, stitching all looks really fantastic. Uh, bottom's not really uh, done much, but they did, you know, move that wash onto the bottom a little bit. So, very, very cool. Overall, this figure, um, I'm kind of surprised how good he looks. Um, they uh, they could have gotten by with a lot less. Like, they wouldn't have had to have done the uh, airbrushing and everything. Uh, if they, they, this had been a mass market toy, they, they definitely wouldn't have. Um, but uh, since this is collector only, it feels like they went a little further out, and I appreciate that. So, articulation is extraordinarily standard for a DCUC. Um, you've got a uh, ball joint in the head, which, uh, like, virtually no up and down. Virtually no side to side, like a little bit, but not much. I'm almost, it's so limited. Um, like you could say it was the coat, but the side to side wouldn't be affected by that. It's so limited that I almost am worried that they've gone back to the, the triple barbell joint, um, which prevents the head from moving in any significant way. I really hope that's not the case because it took them months to fix it last time. Um, so yeah, huge bummer there. Um, uh, it would be really nice if he could get some nice tilt action out of his head, but as soon as you let it go, it's going to pop back into place, so that sucks. Um, swivel hinge shoulders all the way around, of course, and there's nothing to block the, the arms from going up, so it goes all the way up. Great. Um, swivel biceps. Hinged elbows don't go quite 90 degrees with this mold. It never did. Um, they are not bad by any means, but, uh, you know, it just doesn't go 90 degrees. So swivels in the wrist. Uh, it's It would be difficult to get them to go all the way around. Yeah, you can kind of do it, um, because this isn't super flexible plastic, but um, it's probably more flexible than most, so you still got some nice range there. You don't need to really go all the way around anyway. Um, we've got a swivel in the waist. Now, the thing that's unusual is this body um, typically uses an ab crunch, but I can't feel one in there. Like, I keep wanting to move it, I just can't feel it. And I might be crazy, but it doesn't feel like... It feels like almost like they sculpted a new body under here that doesn't have one. And I'm trying to like feel through here, see if I can feel like the edges, but it just feels like a new body under there, which would be crazy to make a new body and have it not be able to move. I don't know. Maybe I'm totally insane, but it feels like uh, there's nothing in there. Like I said, swivel waist, the uh, standard DCUC hips, which go out um, forward and back. They're the... Um, H style hips that some people have mentioned. Unfortunately, because of the coat, um, you cannot get them to do much. I mean, like, you can do a wider stance kind of like that, but that's it. Nothing. So, um, that is a huge shame. I really wish you could get at least, like, maybe a walking pose or something. Like, you can kind of imitate it, um, you know, like with that, but I I'd like this to be open personally. Um, swivels in the thighs, so the legs can go all the way around. And then uh, we've got hinged knees, which do go uh, roughly 90 degrees, pretty close to it. And then hinged ankles. So they go forward about that far. Back, not very far at all. So a little bit back, but not much. Yeah, about the same on both. So uh, articulation is about what you expect from DCUC. It's definitely what you expect um, from this body. This body, they haven't made a whole lot of changes except for uh, taking away the... Uh, rockers in this but i am surprised about the midsection i mean maybe mine does have one and it's just stuck but it sure doesn't feel like it so um yeah i think uh i paid I believe it was it was either 20 or 22 for this figure i've subscribed to the line because i'm a big watchman fan um so for 22 bucks um you get two accessories and a really really nice box and i can almost say that um because I normally throw the packaging away. If if they could have knocked it down to twenty bucks and lost the box, I would have been fine with that. Um, but uh, you know that may not be the case for everyone. Um, so real quick, I'll just put this guy in here, just so you can see scale wise. A little bit taller than a uh, than the typical Marvel Legend. So uh, let me get a little to where their feet are a little. There you go. You can see he's a bit taller. 
Um, the DCUC figures are typically a little taller anyway than standard 6 inch toys. Um, but yeah. So, like I said, about 20 to $22. Uh, I think BBTS has them for closer to $25. Um, 25 is not a bad price if you're a Watchmen fan. If you didn't want to be, this, be a subscriber, you do get the stand, you get the gun, uh, you get the really, really nice packaging. And overall, this is a really good figure. Um, I know I complained about the head and uh, the paint mess and uh, the jacket, but on the whole, this is probably um, the best uh, Rorschach that Mattel could have given us um, with the way Mattel currently is. Um, I'm not a huge Mattel fan, even though I am a fan of a lot of their products. Um, but, uh, yeah, overall, a pretty solid outing. Uh, I, I would say it's probably worth the 20 bucks that you would pay. Um, I wouldn't pay more than probably 30 for it. Uh, and like I said, that's only if you're a big Watchmen fan, so... Uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments, anything about this guy, it's a new line. Um, if there's anything at all you want to know, no question is uh, off limits, please feel free to ask. Um, I would uh, be happy to help you out, let you guys make a decision, um, a fully informed decision if you were going to order it from a third party. It is sold out on Maddie Collector now, but um, I'm sorry my review took so long, but it took them a long time to get this figure to me. Um, so yeah, great action figure. Um, any questions, box below, uh, rate if you'd like to see more. That's pretty much it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, all subscribers. Thanks for the comments. I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya.